six, five. Now everyone is loudly counting down the seconds. Four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. Everyone cheers, drains their glass. People blow noisemakers. You kiss the one standing beside you as the band on the screen starts to play Old Lang Syne. Your friends join in, and together you navigate the strange Scots syllables of a song, <laughs> of a song sung only once a year. Twice today, I guess. <laughs> Good riddance to 2022, someone shouts. What a terrible year. Welcome 2023. You feel a stirring of hope. Surely good things are waiting in this clean new year, born at midnight in a cold and snowy time. Something new has begun. We've crossed a line, hooray! Now it's not a real line, of course. Or rather, it's real and not real at the same time. One moment follows the next, as it did yesterday, as it's done every day of our lives. If you were alone in a room, quietly reading a book, would you even know when the new year had begun? The trees don't know about it, nor the animals, as far as we can tell. The snow doesn't suddenly stop falling at midnight. Somewhere rivers flow and palm trees wave, just as they did yesterday. And our breath goes in and out. One heartbeat follows another. So this line that we've crossed, where does it come from? It's clearly not in nature, or rather, it's in our nature. We've drawn this line, separating one moment in the night from another, one year from the next, because it's what we do. For whatever reason, our marvelous and troublesome brains love to draw lines, to catch the wiggly world in a net, as Alan Watts said. We draw them to help us understand to help us create, to help us live a human life. We separate one thing from another so that we can study them, focus on them. Follow the lame deer tagging behind the herd. She'll be easier to bring down for a venison supper tonight. But the deer is part of the herd, not a solo wanderer. We'd better find that herd if we want to feed our tribe. Become a cardiologist and focus on the heart. In the world, the heart doesn't function without everything else in the human body. But we draw a line to limit our study to that area. It's useful, but it's an illusion in a way. Heart without lungs is just a piece of meat. You don't want our doctors to forget that. We draw lines literally in art and design and architecture to create something beautiful. That's deeply, deeply human. But the painting isn't a real room. And you can't move into the blueprint. We love it when the roadrunner draws a hole in a cave wall and runs through it. We, however, are wily coyote. When we try to follow the roadrunner through, we hit the wall hard. We draw lines like the new year to put our stamp on what happens. The earth does go around the sun, of course, in never ending cycles, but we decide where one cycle ends and another begins. The old Roman New Year's Day was March 25th, which makes sense to me since I always think of spring as a beginning, mostly because I'm not a big fan of winter, but that's my problem. Winter doesn't seem to care. 
at least it keeps coming back, although every year I keep hoping that it won't. The Jewish New Year, of course, is in the autumn, and that also has its appeal. In Thailand, the New Year begins in April, and of course the Chinese New Year is in late January or early February. The differences themselves show us that we are the ones drawing the line. Even the seasons are, in a sense, our creation. In reality, one blends into another without any lines between them. We say so often, it doesn't feel like spring, or oh, it's very mild for autumn. Well, really not. I mean, it is what it is, always. The weather doesn't fit our ideas, our lines. Still, we draw them anyway to help predict what's next and to help us get along in our world. Drawing lines is a great tool. And like all tools, it can be dangerous as well as useful. Because sometimes we forget that it's we ourselves who have drawn the lines and we begin to believe that they're not just a helpful creation, but that they're real. So let's go back to New Year's Eve. We agree, right? It's an arbitrary day. Yet for many of us, year after year, we feel obliged to have a wonderful time. <laughs> if we spend that evening alone, we may feel like a failure. Why would we feel more lonely on that night than we did, say, the night before? It's just another evening, but of course, we've drawn a line that says this one means something different. There's nothing wrong with that. But we might avoid a little misery if we remember that we've created the expectations ourselves. If cuddling up with that book will make you happy on January 1st, why not on December 31st? And then there are the resolutions. We spotlight all the old habits will drop and the new ones will surely begin. After all, it's a new year, a new start. But what makes us think that just because we hang up a new calendar, we'll be able to achieve all the changes we want easily and with a will. In fact, January is, as we are experiencing, a bleak month in our part of the world. And is this the best time to leave a warm bed, scrape snow off the car, drive to the gym, and pursue a philosophy of no pain, no gain? Are we trying to swim upstream in our own biological river? Just a thought. We draw similar lines in time with birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day. They're useful because they give us a chance to appreciate the people in our lives. But there's nothing inherently shiny about that day. In my family, we often celebrate on other days, not the official ones. The restaurants, if you still go to restaurants, I don't, but I can remember <laughs> the restaurants are always a lot less crowded on the Sunday after Mother's Day, for example. I can also keep a birthday celebration going for at least a week, if it's a good year. Um, it's May 31st, in case, <laughs> just in case you want to plan anything. Okay. But after my birthday, the 31st, we draw the line on May and suddenly it's June, because that's what we do. Well, so far the lines we've looked at are pretty benign. but. We humans have drawn some lines that create enormous suffering too. So let's talk about a few of those. One of the worst and the most misguided is race. The idea that people come in different varieties, recognizable from outside features, and that some of these varieties are better than others. That's a big one. 
It's as arbitrary a line as we could possibly draw, actually, since genetic features are distributed among all humans. There isn't one characteristic that we associate with a race that doesn't occur among members of other so-called races. Skin color, nose shape, hair texture, intelligence, industriousness, musical ability all appear in people from every place on earth. Race is a fiction and science knows it. Yet, we're all mesmerized by those lines. And we've built up a system of actual pain and oppression based on nothing true. The funeral procession for a young person killed because of his race is a real line, though created by an imaginary one. Gender, it's another line we draw. That one is getting some fresh examination these days, thanks to courageous people who have freed themselves from the net of blue and pink. But seeing those who can't be pigeonholed can be threatening to those who believe the lines of gender are true, eternal, given by God. It will be interesting to see where this exploration goes. Then there's age, a topic I've talked about with you before, if you remember, we're going back a while. Many of us are discovering that the real lines on our faces don't mean the end of the line for wit, sexuality, or creativity. But some of us face the unemployment line because of a number, an arbitrary measure that we have forgotten is just an idea pasted over reality. Politics, shall I go on? <laughs> Left and right, us and them, deluded sheep versus those in the know. Real Americans against those people. Hey, we're probably all tired to death of those lines we've drawn. Yet, we refresh them every day, don't we? Religion, nationality, social class nature versus nurture. Everywhere we look, we see the lines we draw. Human culture, which means human life since no one exists outside of cultures, are made up of these lines. Sometimes they are velvet ropes. Sometimes they cut like wire. But always our minds create them, draw them, over the wiggy, wiggly, complex reality and unity of the universe. And of course, we create them in ourselves as well. We can see the shadows of the lines we draw in some of the questions we ask. Why don't I feel like a grown up? Do we think to ask where is the line of full maturity and how would we know when we cross it? When will I get over my guilt for the foolish things I've done? But is there a, a timetable for forgiveness? Where do we find the line that tells us when it's due? And for that matter, where, where is the line between folly and ignorance, between a mistake and a sin? This one gets messy fast. How can I lose these last 10 pounds? Aha, will bells go off when I cross the line between overweight and okay? Is it possible I'm okay right now? If so, why does everyone tell me I'm not? What is true enlightenment? Gee, there's a brutal one. If I find it and cross it, does it make me better than everyone else? Will I search forever for it, convinced that there's, it's out, must be out there somewhere? I'm sure you can think of many, many more of your own. Helpful, painful, sometimes both at once. 
What can we do about them? Well, as I've said, the answer isn't to stop drawing lines, <laughs> as if we could. As Watts might say, our brains are line drawing organs. It's part of our survival, of our creativity, and of our essential humanness. And they're useful. When I cross the line from the suburbs to Chicago, I know I'm getting closer to you. So how do we use lines without being fooled by them? Well, for me, the first step is to remember that we draw these lines collectively and as individuals. They're not immutable, not eternal. In a sense, they don't even exist any more than my dream exists when I wake up. Now, the fact that lines are artificial doesn't mean that they're meaningless. The line down the middle of the street is there for good reason. If I cross it in my car, I may endanger myself and others too. It hasn't been there since the beginning of time. It doesn't make me sinful if I drive too close to it. And if the road is widened or narrowed, the position of that center line might change. Lines change all the time. Take the issue of what's considered overweight. Once upon a time, fat was considered desirable. For a man, a paunch showed his prosperity. For a woman, her fertility and desirability. That changed only around 100 years ago. So even though we might say, well, we know better now, we really don't know anything about it. Attractiveness is an arbitrary judgment. It's a line we can recognize without having to take it very seriously. The second thing we can remember is that given the arbitrariness and changeability of our lines, if we find one that just doesn't fit, it might be the lines problem, not ours. If we don't feel warm and cuddly and loving on Christmas, maybe it's not because we're cold hearted Scrooges. Maybe it's been a tough year. Maybe our family is a royal pain to deal with. And maybe the expectation of endless holiday joy is nonsense aimed at selling us something, as so much is in our world. Could it be we're fine just the way we are? Leading to the third thing to try, drawing the line somewhere else. Redefining something according to our own experience, mind, and heart. I mentioned enlightenment before. Well, it's a word I don't use very much because it seems like a crazy and painful line to me. But how about the word freedom? Can we be free? Can we be free of our quirks, our suffering, our confusion? Well, to me, to be free of something doesn't mean it disappears, although sometimes things do. To me, being free means we're not bound by our lines, not fooled by them, not tied up by Watts's equator. I'm not saying we can notice that we're free all the time. That's another dividing line, isn't it, all the time? But at some level, we can be free. We are free. We can see the line, acknowledge it, and know it's imaginary. Hey, imagination is real. It's real imagination. It's a good tool and a bad master. It's a deep and integral function of our human brains. It isn't a direct line to the truth of the universe. Really, we are the universe, all of it. We're just another bend of the big wiggle. We can locate our bend by the lines we draw, 
We can navigate with longitude and latitude with a straight Roman grid of streets and roads. Lines help us live a full human life. And I believe part of that human life is loving all that we do and when the time is right, seeing it for what it is. There's nothing wrong with lines. In a way, there's even nothing wrong with the pain they cause. It wakes us up, doesn't it? But oh, what a difference it makes when there's a little space between the lines and us, when we don't have to believe them. We can dance in that space. In the words of Coleman Barks in his translation of the great Sufi poet Rumi, out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Happy New Year. Amen. Now please join us singing hymn number 326, Let All the Beauty